Do you think I can fit this round disc through this smaller square hole? It seems impossible when I try to put it through here. You can see that the diameter of the disc is much bigger than the diagonal of the square. But if I just fold this board in a certain way, then something magical happens. The disc suddenly fits. How did this magically happen? The disc won't fit, then it suddenly fits. You can see in two dimensions, there's no way to arrange this square so that a line with the diameter of the disc fits through it. But if we lift that paper into a third spatial dimension and fold it, then we can rearrange the shape in a way that wouldn't be possible if we didn't pull it into a higher dimension. Before we fold the paper, the largest distance is the diagonal of the square, but that still isn't big enough for the disc. But when we transfer the 2D square into a 3D structure, then the disc magically fits. But why? Well, there's a good paper that goes into the mathematics of how this happens and shows you different ways with different types of folds you can do to achieve this. But I want to show you why this happens without math. Let's take a look at just the square without a sheet of paper around it, like this paper square here. You can see that we can very easily fit the disc through it when we bend the square and change the angles because we can just flatten out the square and slide the disc through. But once the square is embedded in a paper or cardboard, we have a problem. When we try to flatten the square or change those 90 degree angles, we're left with some extra paper that has to go somewhere. So if we're to flatten this square, we have to remove this area of paper. Then we can easily flatten the squares and send the disc through. So once that chunk of paper is gone, then we can open up that square, change the angle and send the disc through. So when we fold the paper, we're essentially taking those two squares of paper out and sending them into a different plane that won't interfere with the disc. So we're essentially removing the material without actually removing it because we're just sending them into a higher spatial dimension. So would this be possible to do in 3D? Could we actually send unwanted material into a fourth spatial dimension? Well, we could only do this if there actually was a fourth spatial dimension. As far as we know, there are three spatial dimensions and one time dimension that we call space-time. We'd have to bend space-time. Huh, that sounds familiar. How do we bend space-time? Oh yeah, remember that all mass in the universe actually bends space-time? When you get big balls of mass together like stars and planets, then you get huge bends in space-time. But wait, if space-time bends, does that mean it's bending into a higher dimension like we saw here? For example, we've all seen the example of bending space-time when they show planets orbiting on a stretchy fabric. And you can see that the fabric is bending off the plane of the fabric into the third dimension. But is that what's actually happening when space-time bends? Is our third dimension bending into a higher fourth dimension that contains the universe? Well, actually, no. Space-time bends, but it doesn't bend into anything else. This type of bending is called intrinsic curvature. There are two types of curvature, intrinsic and extrinsic. A surface exhibits extrinsic curvature when that surface curves into a higher dimension in an embedding space. So for example, if I take this two-dimensional piece of paper and draw a triangle on it, all the angles of the triangle will add up to 180 degrees. But I can roll the paper into the third dimension, so it has extrinsic curvature now. But notice that on the surface of the paper, we didn't do anything to disturb the triangle. All the angles still add up to 180 degrees. If there were little two-dimensional beings living on this paper, they wouldn't know that this paper was curved because it's extrinsically curved. But now we can take the surface of a sphere like this. It's also a 2D surface and it's also extrinsically curved because it's curving into a higher third dimension. But notice that if I draw a triangle, I don't get 180 degrees. In fact, I can make a triangle with three right angles. This is happening because along with the extrinsic curvature, the surface of the sphere also has intrinsic curvature. So this intrinsic curvature affected the geometry of the surface. When something is intrinsically curved, it changes the geometry of the plane. So Euclidean geometry doesn't work anymore. Three right angles now make a triangle. That doesn't work on a non-curved plane. So the sphere is an example of an object that has both intrinsic and extrinsic curvature. But is it possible to have only intrinsic curvature without extrinsic? Can you change the shortest distance between two points without bending into some higher dimension? The answer is yes. For example, we can have a flat plane with these dotted lines on it. I can curve this flat sheet by changing where these lines go, but the flat sheet is still flat. So we haven't stretched it up or down into a higher dimension, but it's still curved. 
If there were a two-dimensional flatlander on the sheet, they could walk along these vertical lines and they would think they're walking in a straight line. But if they drew a triangle near these high curvature points, it wouldn't add up to 180 degrees. So that's the only way that they would know that their space is curved. These straight lines that get bent in intrinsically curved space have a name. They're called geodesics. A geodesic is the path that an object would follow if the acceleration of the object were always zero. If you shot a bullet or shined a laser, it would follow this path. This is the same for our space-time that we live in. It can bend and deform when mass or energy is lumped together, but it isn't bending or deforming into anything. It's not embedded in some higher dimension, but it just intrinsically bends. And we know it bends because we can look for these bent geodesics. We can measure when time gets bent and we can also check if it's possible to see things behind massive objects that we normally wouldn't be able to see if space-time weren't bent. For example, we can see this star that normally should be behind the sun, but the sun bends the light of the star around the sun so we can see it. This is due to the bent geodesics. So if you want to try this yourself, you can just use a standard DVD. It's 12 centimeters in diameter, so that means if you just cut a square that's 6.2 centimeters on each length of it, then when you fold it up, it's going to have a linear, linear length that's 12.4 centimeters. So you have 0.4 centimeters of room to slide that DVD through. So this length of it is actually 0.4 centimeters longer than the diameter of the DVD, so it can fit right through. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or questions about this video, let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you next time.